welcome and ting and ting and ting hey let's go ahead and watch another video here and uh somebody suggested that i watch this here and this one is called biography of homan potoknik slovene rock rocket engineer i hope i pronounced that right that's why i keep staring at it i want to pronounce it right you know correct me if i'm wrong in the comment section and thing i'd like to thank everybody you know once again man I enjoy learning the things from you guys especially, things that the videos may not be as on point on, you tell me. Thank you very much for uh, the comments and stuff like that. Let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer. Let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer and see what the uh, Slavon Rocket Engineer here is all about. Herman Potochnik. Herman Potochnik, Herman Nordum, was a Slovene rocket engineer and pioneer of astronautics. He is chiefly remembered for his work addressing the long-term human habitation of space. Potochnik was born in the port of Pula, Istria, then part of the Austria-Hungarian monarchy, now in Croatia. His family was of Slovene ethnicity and originated from Lower Styria in Austria-Hungary, now Slovenia. Both of Potochnik's parents were Slovene. His father Josef was born in 1841, in Zagorngi Razbor near Slovenj Gradic, and at the time of Herman's birth he served as a doctor and high Navy O. And you know, I've noticed that in that region there, I guess it's because there's a, a lot of landlocked countries there, there's a lot of migration back and forth in between these places, you know what I mean? And maybe it's because of all the turmoil that was there, you know, people keep moving to find a peaceful, a more peaceful, settled area for their the, the family and stuff. And also, from what I've, I've learned in the comment section where most of the comments I'm getting, a lot of it was forced migration to 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 to, to affect the demographic of certain places and countries there. You know what I mean? So there's just all these people just going around and thing. You know, and no wonder why there's so much confusion about who is from where and and who should get to. You know, because all they, these outside powers come in and they just create all this. Uh, amnosity among the people, you know what I mean? Make them different religions, make them different political uh, beliefs, make them uh, accentuate the, the different uh, cultural uh, ethnic groupings in those areas and things, you know what I'm saying? Let's get back to this here. It's kind of like, like I said, and I keep I always doing this, when you go back to Africa, you know what I mean? They're all black there, but then uh, outside those outside are able to come and, and, and accentuate their conflicts and, and use it to their benefit. Same thing with the Native Americans here, you know what I mean? Uh, they put the tribes against the tribes, and you know, that tribe is this, this tribe is that. It's divide and rule. In that case, divide and conquer there, because they conquered a whole group of people, pretty much made them extinct to a certain degree. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, let's get back to this. Officer in the Austro-Hungarian Navy Harbor of Pula. His mother Minka was born February 7, 1854. She was a descendant of Czech immigrants, manufacturers of crucibles for glassmaking, and a daughter of a well-known wine merchant and local councillor Josef Kokosinek from Maribor, born in Vidinje. In 1866, Hermann's father Josef participated in the Second Battle of Biss, where the Austrian Navy under command of von Tegethoff defeated the Royal Italian Navy. 
Joseph was later a general in the Austro-Hungarian army. When Hermann's father died in 1894, his mother moved the family to Maribor. Hermann had two brothers, Adolf and Gustav, who were both Navy officers, and a sister Franziska, Franci. He spent most of his childhood years in Maribor and, according to oral sources, in Bidenje. In Maribor, Potochnik attended primary school. Afterward, he went to the military secondary schools in Fischau and Haranis in Moravia. His uncle Heinrich was a major general in the army, and probably enabled his study at Austrian military schools. From 1910 to 1913, he studied at the Technical Military Academy in Modeling in Lower Austria, Niederösterreich, near Vienna and graduated as an engineer's second lieutenant. His specialization was building of railways and bridges. During the First World War he served in Galicia, Serbia and Bosnia and in 1915 he was promoted to the rank of First Lieutenant Oberleutnant. He was assigned to the southwestern front of the Soka battlefield and there he experienced a breakthrough of the Austrian army to the river Piava and its R. Petrit. In 1919, he was pensioned off from the Austrian military with the rank of captain because of tuberculosis that he contracted during the war. He started to study electrical engineering in the mechanical engineering department of the University of Technology in Vienna, Austria, and was awarded a doctorate in engineering. From 1925 onward, he devoted himself entirely to the problems of rocket science and space technology. Now we get into the vibe. Owing to chronic illness, he did not find a job or marry, but lived with his brother Adolf in Vienna, Austria. At the end of 1928, he published his sole book Das Problem der Befahrung des Weltraums, der Raket and Motor, The Problem of Space Travel, The Rocket Motor, in Berlin. The publisher, Richard Carl Schmidt, printed the year 1929 as a publishing date, probably from a purely business motive to keep the book looking new throughout the coming year, and this date is often mistakenly given as the actual date of publication. In 188 pages and 100 handmade illustrations, Potochnik set out a plan for a breakthrough into space and the establishment of a permanent human presence there. He conceived a detailed design for a space station, regarded by Russian and American historians of space flight to be the first architecture in space. He described the use of orbiting spacecraft for detailed observation of the ground for peaceful and military purposes, and described how the special sea Conditions of space could be useful for scientific experiments. Potochnik expressed strong doubts of the potentially destructive military use of these fresh discoveries. The book was translated into Russian in early 1935, Slovene in 1986 by the Slovenska Matica, English in 1999 by NASA and Croatia. Then in 2004 by Marino Fonovic, published by Labinart Press. A partial translation to English, containing most of the essential chapters, was made as early as 1929 for the American magazine Science Wonder Stories and was issued in three parts July, August and September 1929.
So, eh. With his many ideas, he became one of the founders of astronautics. His concepts were first taken seriously only by the amateur rocketry movement in Germany, the Verein für Raumschifffahrt (BFR) spaceflight society, centered on Hermann Oberth and his co-workers. Now, look at this guy who had this uh, storied career and stuff like that. Who had a part to play in a rocket scientist, scientific uh, research and all of that. And nobody knows about, uh, though maybe small or um, contributed to stuff, you know. And it's not small if it, if it helped propel ideas that created us being where we are in outer space. Am I a proponent of uh, space? exploration yeah if it's going to benefit everybody but we all know it's not going to benefit everybody so who or what are we exploring for unless it's to get somebody else rich while the rest of us toil you know it's just going to be the same thing if it's used to, for the betterment of mankind and I mean when I mean the betterment of mankind I'm talking about technologically in conjunction with mankind as a human being as a person, you know, if everything progresses at the same time, instead of going in one direction of greed and, you know, a rat race type of living, no, but, and even he said that, you know, to use that uh, technology for military uh, endeavors is going to be detrimental to everybody, even he said it in his book. A humanitarian in its type Russian group. edition, the book may also have influenced Sergei Korolev's circle. More locally, Viennese engineers dismissed his work as fantasy. Potochnik's book described geostationary satellites, first put forward by Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, and discussed communication between them and the ground. using radio, but fell short of the idea of using satellites for mass broadcasting and as telecommunications relays developed by Arthur C. Clarke in his Wireless World article of 1945. The wheel-shaped space station served as an inspiration for further development by Werner von Braun, another form her VFR member, in 1952. Von Braun saw orbiting space stations as a stepping stone to travel to other planets. In 1968, Stanley Kubrick's groundbreaking film, 2001, A Space Odyssey, depicted such a role for Space Station V. Potochnik died of pneumonia at the age of 36 in wow. great poverty in Vienna, Austria, and was buried there. An obituary notice about his death was printed in one Maribor daily newspaper, mentioning his ranks, engineers and captain, his illness, but nothing about his work regarding space. You know, the, the, the way this guy's life played out and uh, all his ideas are just there. That it, at the time, it seems like it was before its time. How many people with great ideas have just been shunned, not taken seriously, through the course of human life or human existence? that maybe could propel us in to a more positive outlook on the world as we know it. You know what I'm saying? Because we really don't have a positive outlook on this world. Everything we have created has got to have some kind of violent connotations to it. You know what I mean? Everything we... It, 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 the simple thing as the Bibles and, and the religious books and stuff has deteriorated into stuff about war and strife and pestilence and pestilence and all that kind of stuff and nothing about love and peace and togetherness 
no more. At least where I am, that's the way it is. I don't know how it is where you are. seems like uh, we don't hear people creating things for the betterment of mankind or for the good of mankind. It's more for the pay, payout that comes from it. So then it could get into unscrupulous hands if it's by the largest bidder. And if you notice something about inventors back in a day like this gentleman here, they want it to be used for something good and something progressive, you know what I mean? And uh, I know saying the word progressive probably gives you ideas of something, but it's just a word in the dictionary, meaning progressing, you know what I'm saying? And thing. But anyway, man, this was quite interesting. Thank you for who suggested this here for me to watch. Uh, I quite thoroughly enjoyed it. Just to, just to give it a life, because I talk about that a little bit before when we talk about people who invented stuff and then there is the pattern and who is taking it and who is dying poor. And there's an example of a man with ideas that was never materialized, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, man, I'll leave a link in the description to this video so you can go check it out. Hope you guys are having a great day taking care of each other, thus taking care of yourself. Take care, alright? Cool runnings.